Hello, Mr. Okay, TPR. You're a longtime Pixel phone user, right? That's correct. But you're currently cheating on your Pixel 6 Pro? Yes. With the Samsung Galaxy S22? That's right. Can you explain why? Well, it all started one day. I had on my skinny jeans. You know, the extra skinny ones. And I had my Pixel in my usual phone pocket. And I tried to get it out. And it was stuck. So I was like, I'm tired of this. Pixels used to be all nice and compact like I like. And I didn't want to be all big and stuff. So I went and got me a nice, small S22 on the side. <laughs> and guess what? Nobody will ever know. <laughs> wait, wait. We can see your face. Your face. Today, I'm going to give you eight ways the Galaxy S22 beats the Pixel 6 Pro. Now, if you're new here, my name is Reed, and on this channel, I provide high quality tech videos that has plenty of crispy B roll, content that keeps you entertained, and you never know what surprises might pop up on this channel. I don't even know what surprises might pop up on this channel. But if that sounds like something that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming content. Now let's dive into the eight ways that the Galaxy S22 beats the Pixel 6 Pro. Yeah. Now when it comes to customizing the way your phone looks and performs, Samsung gives you a ton of options. One gripe that I have with the Pixel is that you have no option to remove the Google at a glance widget or the Google search bar. So if you are attempting to achieve a super clean and minimal home screen, you can never truly achieve this with the stock Pixel launcher. Another problem with the Pixel 6 Pro is there aren't any options to change the lock screen appearance. On the Galaxy S22, you can change various aspects like the clock style, number of notifications to show, font style, and even custom video lock screens. Personally, I'm not a fan of the new Android 12 Pixel lock screen, so having more options on the Galaxy S22 is a welcome change. Now there are way too many customization options to cover on the S22 in this video, but be sure to check out my Galaxy S22 tips and tricks video where I go deeper into those options after this one. I can't stress how much I absolutely love the new Samsung Smart Widgets. These widgets are very similar to the scrollable widgets on iOS, except you can also scroll vertically on the Galaxy devices. Google does have its own custom clock and weather widgets, but the awesome YouTube turntable widget is also available on the Galaxy. And if you want to get the Pixel exclusive widgets on the Galaxy, you can easily replicate them by downloading KWGT and installing one of the many Android 12 widget packs. I guarantee you will be pleasantly surprised by how good some of these third-party widgets are, and I actually prefer some of these over the stock Google widgets. So basically, you can replicate the Pixels widgets on the Galaxy S22, but you cannot replicate the Galaxy widgets on the Pixel. So overall, I can definitely say that I will truly miss the Galaxy widgets when I do switch back over to a Pixel device. That screen. There just isn't a better one in the business. There is a reason why Samsung produces most of the smartphone screens on the market, but it's like they saved the cream of the crop technology for their Galaxy devices. The screens are bright, vibrant, and full of color with super crisp graphics. And the viewing angles are mind blowing with the appearance that the graphics are literally resting on top of the glass. And when you add 120 hertz to these phenomenal graphics, it's truly a beautiful thing to experience. The Pixel 6 Pro still has an excellent screen, but it just isn't as good as the Galaxy. Notably, the Pixel screen is not as bright and vibrant, and the graphics just don't pop like they do on the S22. 
even though the Pixel 6 Pro has a higher resolution screen than the S22, you don't really notice any difference in everyday use. Even though the S22 only has a 1080p screen, it still packs 422 pixels per inch on a 6.1 inch screen, which is more than enough for me in everyday use. Basically, when it comes to the screen, I don't think anyone can argue that Samsung wins in this department. It's absolutely a thing of beauty, and it's truly one of the things that I have definitely been enjoying while using this phone. Haptics on the Pixel 6 Pro are good, but the haptics on the S22 are notably better. The only way I can explain it is, the Pixel haptics are subtle, but still have a slight over vibration to them, and I didn't really notice this until I got the S22. The S22 haptics are very tight with no extra vibration or buzzing, and it's more like subtle taps, but still punchy at the same time. There are tons of customization options on the Galaxy to change the haptic feedback, even down to the type of vibration pattern with notifications. I highly recommend you go and play with these settings. You will be blown away with the variations and the ability of the haptic engine. There are also several instances throughout the interface where you are greeted with very satisfying feedback that just makes using the OS a joy and adds to the immersion. Haptics remind me a lot of the iPhones, which definitely have the best haptics on the market. I'm not saying the S22 haptics are that good, but they aren't far off. So with all that being said, the S22 gets a nod when it comes to the haptics. This is one of the reasons why I personally picked up the S22. First of all, the size. Just like your boy TPR at the beginning of the video, it's just perfect for me. It's literally the size of the Pixel 4, but with the larger screen. It provides in-hand comfort, and I'm able to use this with one hand with no issues. The flat screen along with the boxy shape not only looks good, but it also makes the phone very comfortable to use. When using the Pixel 6 Pro, I'm constantly worried about dropping the phone due to the size and overall slippery in-hand feel. And with the S22, this just has not been a problem for me. There is total comfort and confidence when using the S22. And the premium feel of the aluminum rails and the glass front and back makes the phone feel like a solid, high quality piece of tech. I really hope that we continue to get high quality compact phones like this because it has truly been a breath of fresh air to use. So when it comes to portrait photos, Google Pixel devices have traditionally been the king in this department. But if you checked out my in-depth camera review of the Pixel 6 Pro, you would see that I've noticed some issues this year. When it comes to the portrait, my problem is that the bokeh is slightly too strong and overblown on the Pixel devices. Now, when I picked up the S22, I realized that they had a much more natural fall off when it comes to the depth of field. Overall, the edge detection on the S22 has been good. It's even been able to produce great depth of field and low light conditions. They added a new feature called nightography, and overall, through my tests, it's been doing a great job. So, as of right now, I have to give this a nod to the Galaxy. They did a great job with the bokeh, they did a great job with the portrait mode, and they even did a great job with the portrait video. So I'm looking forward to seeing if Google's gonna do some adjustments via software to improve this. But as of right now, gotta give this to the S22. The Galaxy lineup currently has the better ecosystem. Currently, Google has not released the smartwatch yet, so you're forced to get something like the Galaxy Watch 4 that I have here. Now, this is a great watch and it pairs up nicely with the Pixel, but some of the features like the EKG will not work, so you're not getting the full experience. Google does have Pixel Buds, but Samsung offers a much larger variety of choices when it comes to headphones. No matter if you want something for active lifestyles, casual listening, or if you want the total package that the Buds Pro offers, Samsung gives you those options. And with Samsung, you have the options like noise cancellation, transparency mode, and Dolby Atmos which aren't currently available on the Pixel Buds. Samsung also has integration with Galaxy TVs, 
laptops, and Galaxy tablets. Features like Quick Share allow you to quickly share files between Galaxy devices, very similar like what's done on Apple devices with AirDrop. Now Google does offer devices like the Chromebooks and their smart home devices, but it really doesn't have a true ecosystem like Samsung does. All of these Google devices basically work the same way on any other Android phone as it would work on a Pixel phone. So it really doesn't create a true Pixel ecosystem where it really gives you an advantage by using all Google products. Being able to use a Samsung product with the Pixel devices and get basically the same experience, it's not a true ecosystem. And when you switch over to the Samsung, you really see the difference of how all the devices pair up with each other. You get special features when you're using the Samsung devices together. And that is what a true ecosystem is about. So that's another reason why you might want to look into going with the Samsung. Now this is one area where Google should be ashamed. The S22 devices will provide four years of Android updates while the Google Pixel 6 will only provide three years of Android updates. A Google product is only gonna provide three years of updates and its biggest competitor is gonna outdo them by one year? Come on, Google. The Pixel devices are absolute beasts when it comes to performance. So we know that they are capable of supporting more than three years of updates. Many users are still using Pixel 2 XLs as their daily drivers so we know the phones are more than capable. But as long as Pixel devices are only providing three years of updates, the Galaxy is just gonna provide the better option if you plan on keeping your phone for a while and you wanna keep it with the most up-to-date version of Android. So overall, I've really been enjoying the Galaxy S22. I just wanna do this video for anyone else out there who like me may have been considering picking up a Galaxy device and coming from a Pixel. Um, for whatever reason it may be, I just wanted to show you some of the things that I am enjoying about the Galaxy S22. Now, like I went over, there are definitely some things that are better than the Pixel 6 Pro, but there are also some things that it's not better at. So make sure you check out my full review of the Galaxy S22 so you can see my full experience of using this phone. And if you enjoyed this video and if it was helpful, definitely go ahead and give me a like and make sure you drop a comment and let me know. I love talking to you guys and I love hearing the feedback. So go and get down there, holler at me and let me know what you think. So go ahead and click right here and check out more awesome Galaxy S22 content and I'll see you all down in the comments. See you over there. Later.